What's up guys? So if everything is working right, then we should actually be live this time, and this time nobody's having to wait 30 extra minutes, because instead of coming on at 1 like I originally thought, we're coming on at 1.30, but I didn't tell you guys 1 originally, so it's almost like I didn't make any mistakes. <laughs> With that said, we've got Bionic Dance here, we've got Frustrated Atheist, we've got Atheist Rationale, and what we're going to be doing today is responding to Matt Powell's new, uh, do we really want to call it a movie? Is that, is that what we want to call it? Because it's Film and video regurgitation. We, there we go, that's probably closer to the truth. We could also call it a crock of shit. Uh, you know, that's, that's even more accurate. Well, to be fair, I haven't seen it yet, but I'll probably have that opinion when we start. Yeah, I know that if, I know that uh, Russ, you and um, you and Sean have both taken a few minutes to watch the beginning of the movie, whereas I'm going in. Me and Kate are going in blind. Yeah, and that. Oh, go ahead, man. I've actually gone in and watched the whole thing now. It's it's full of like a bunch of like terrible arguments. Well, no spoilers. Uh, <laughs> I we got a know... couple of them. Um... I wasn't spoiling anything. I wasn't spoiling anything. I want to know if Jeebus comes back at the end. Oh, there, there, there are a couple yeah. of cool experience. I mean, um, uh, cameos from people we know, so that's kind of cool. Oh dearie. Yeah. What you mean, like YouTube people? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. That's interesting. Okay, well, when we see those cameos, we'll just have to point out and say, "Hey, there's that guy." <laughs> there's the guy I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Okay, so I'll also say um, we're not going to be grabbing anybody else on stream for the time being because, one, this is a planned thing. Two, I just spent the last half hour getting the, the images set up for this uh, because I'm horrible at technology. So if I grabbed in more people, then I would end up having to set everything back up. I don't feel like doing that because I'm incredibly lazy. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and start playing the movie. And basically we're going to be treating this a bit like a response video, but also a bit like a kind of a movie night thing. We're not going to go through the entire movie in one go because it's an hour and a half and we're going to be doing a lot of pausing, I'm sure. As I said before, guys, if we get to any point where you guys want to say something that's going to be more than like a few seconds, then just say pause. We'll pause the video and then we'll go into whatever madness we have to delve into. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty of that. Sweet. Are we all ready for the mental lobotomy? Oh, yeah. Let's do this. All right. That's my expression. Oh. <laughs> I see we begin with the DVD cover. Because it's not playing in any theaters around. They have to use the... <laughs> Well, <laughs> at least it's not like some riff on the Universal Studios logo or some shit. Probably would have been a little more creative. I don't know. Ah, oh, we begin God. with Hitler. Because I've consistently maintained his yeah. evolution. Holy Godwin's law, Batman! <sighs> wasn't wasn't Hitler though like a Lamarckian evolutionist? Hitler was more or less. Uh, he was a. America and the world mourns as the oh. biggest school shooting in U.S. history took place today at Columbine High School. According to reports, Wait. two gunmen came in shooting. We're beginning with Columbine the school. <laughs> yeah. What yeah, police and everyone else are looking for now is a reason for the violence that tore this quiet school and suburban neighborhood apart just weeks before graduation. Okay. Pause. Okay. What does that have so, to do with anything? So, for starters, um, when you said about Hitler, Hitler was uh, what is known as a social Darwinist. He, um, oh, where evolution he put, was his philosophy? Yes. As opposed um, to... He, yeah. Okay. And so he used as his philosophy, but was very much a Christian. Uh, as a matter of fact, he had an interview where he uh, said that he was raised Catholic and he would remain so until the you know his dying days. And so that whole entire thing of trying to uh, make Hitler to be uh, equated with evolution is completely and utterly. The evolution that we know and that we uh, use is completely asinine. So well, and even if he he believed in evolution, it's not like there aren't religious people out there who believe in evolution. Of course there are. Exactly. Nope, it's just that the young Earth creationist version of Christianity can't exist in a world where 
evolution is a thing because because apparently you have to you have to rebuild your Christianity to such a such a wrong degree that you have to deny reality to make it work. When there's versions of Christianity that don't deny all that reality and and accept science. Mm-hmm. Okay, so and then this Columbine thing, we just play it and we'll see. <laughs> okay, I have a feeling I know where they're going with this, and I've actually addressed this before on a previous video, so we'll see if they do it. Look at the pixelation on that. Mm. Isn't this supposed to be a 1080p video? <laughs> Has this been an adventure? Okay. And the school is in a panic, and I'm in the library. I've got students down on the table, kids. Heads under the table. On April 20th, 1999, the world was shocked as two students at Columbine High School in Littleton, Colorado carried out the largest and most brutal school shootings in U.S. history to date. Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris, heavily indoctrinated in evolutionary teaching, planned and carried out the massacre on Adolf Hitler's birthday. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, okay, yeah, so... First, you can see that, uh, especially with doing the 911 calls, they are definitely doing an appeal to emotion. They mm, want yes. you to... Uh, associate the these horrible horrible incidences with evolution and from and, the very get go and on top of that you're already and on top of that if i can take a second to maybe poison the well a bit <laughs> um right uh or at least put a filter oh to the already poisoned well um so mm -hmm. what happened with columbine when when they've actually like researched the psychology behind the shooters and they looked at their their notes and everything that they had like their conversations that they knew about their mm -hmm. their thoughts on evolution if correct me if i'm wrong but came from an idea that they thought that they were more highly evolved than everyone else and that put them on a higher moral plane but that's evolution as perceived by aristotle's ladder and aristotle's ladder does isn't actually how evolution works there's no such thing as a higher exactly. evolved being so exactly if anything uh, not only <laughs> that but if you actually go back and look at what happened uh you know prior to columbine uh these two kids they were excessively bullied they were like social you know, pariahs in their school time. Yeah. Yeah. Some of and the so names they were would... called are like names that uh Steven Anderson is like actively like uh fucking called people in uh real life mm -hmm. as well. Like um I don't I don't want to use the word, but like it refers to like sexuality. Uh there's actually Does it begin videos... with an, does it begin with an F and end in somebody slapping you in the face? Exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but um okay. Fucking, there's actually, uh, they, they took videos of themselves, like, walking through uh, uh, their campus, right? And uh, mm -hmm. they were just um, talking about um, some stuff that was happening on, uh, going on in, like, regular lives or whatever. And then um, they walk through a group of uh, athletes, and they end up punching um, one of the, uh, I forgot who it was specifically, Dylan or Eric. But uh, one of them was filming, and they punched him straight in the gut. And everybody around them didn't even react. Apparently, it's something that regularly happened at that school. Yeah, and, that, uh, at that point, of course, you're going to have those kids snap on you. Yes, and, and, and I've had this conversation with so many people, especially because um, a lot of, probably a lot of the uh, people actually watching, uh, well, some of them at least, know that I live one town over from Santa Fe High School, the one that got shot up recently this year. Um and I've gotten into so many conversations with people about this. Um, the thing is, is whenever you are bullied beyond, you know, beyond bullied, it's, you're going to end up doing one or two things when you snap and you will snap. Um, eventually, once you've had too much, you are either going to self harm or you're going to harm others. Yeah. Now, granted, a lot of the times people tend to self harm and <laughs> That is their way of coping with everything that's But going if you on. feel like you're a more highly evolved being than everybody else, then why hurt yourself when you can hurt the lesser beings? Exactly. And so you have people who are already thinking 
having this wrong idea about evolution as it is, probably because who knows, they probably heard that's the way it is in fucking uh, church or something. But well, uh, and that is one of the problems with things like this is like like they love to blame people who are not uh, like believers. Uh, for like they say this is what atheists do as if there's some sort of doctrine the way there is for religion meanwhile yeah. atheists are just sitting there eating potato chips like what <laughs> like hey did you, did you say something did you say no oh okay I'm, I'm gonna go back to this <laughs> speaking of going back to this we're only two I minutes in and I already kind of want to shoot myself and I, eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I take this potato chip <laughs> and I eat it uh. On the floor, you gotta stay on the floor! Oh god! Stay in the line of fire! Oh god! The gun is right outside the library door! Harris was wearing a shirt that said natural selection, while Klebold's shirt said wrath. Klebold okay. stated in his journal that he and Harris were godlike and had evolved further so, than everyone else. Exactly what I said before. Yeah. Yes. The boys They're would mock and harass everyone Other they killed. Their victims would be asked if they believed in God. If yeah, the answer was yes, they would be killed. The if no, they, too. they would let because them live. Eric Harris had shot Rachel three times, and about five or six minutes passed before the final shot. And he walked over to her and lifted up her head by her hair, and he said, Do you still believe in God? And uh, pause, Rachel looked him pause, in the eye. Pause. Okay. Yeah. I have There's a, a lot question. of problems with it. I have a question How because they the thing is, is yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Is how the hell? I mean, I understand it was his daughter who was killed, but how the hell do you know that that's what happened? Well, how do you know there were that? cameras or eyewitnesses. It's one or the other. There, there was actually um, mm -hmm. one eyewitness that said this happened. However, there were. Multiple other eyewitnesses that came out and said that they basically were shooting people at random. Um, there's actually going to be a scene exactly. here in a couple of minutes. Is going to well, really no spoilers, no spoilers. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, I I'm not telling you what it is. But um, <laughs> the the conclusion that they draw for one of these murders is there. There it has absolutely no basis in reality. So it's not even. And it's completely out of left field. So if, if yeah. this is one of the reasons why I would like, I, I would absolutely love if we had had, if I had known that this is the direction they were going to go in, I would have wanted to have uh, Jim Hall from Atheist Edge on with us because he was in the military for many years. And one of the things that I would love to ask Jim here is, so in a fight or flight, everybody is dying around you situation. How accurate is your memory afterwards? How mm. reliable is it? No, oh, I can already tell you. I can already tell you it's not very reliable. Because um, I was not in the military for as many years as Jim was. But the one thing that they teach you is to, you know, um, pretty much survive. And when your adrenaline is pumping in the way that uh, when someone's shooting after you, Sometimes I hear a lot of people, they, the only thing that they remember is a blur. They say everything happened in a blur. There are some people who um, relive the certain, uh, certain moments over and over. But for the most part, your memory is a complete blur. And you're talking about a bunch of untrained kids yeah. who um, are trying to run for their life. They're panicking. They're probably, some of them are probably hyperventilating. As they're walking out. Which means they have a lack of oxygen in the brain anyway. Yes. And so any any amount of conversation that might have been happening is not going to be something that you are going to remember. I was never in a life or death situation where my life was in danger. But I did have to bring someone back with mouth to mouth. And honestly, I remember every last scrap of it. So maybe it's only if it's your own life in danger. Could be, it could be? It's the it's the difference between if you're if you're having to save somebody else, your brain might put everything into sharp focus. But if you're having to run away, your brain well, might put everything into a different focus. And well, also, 
the thing is, is Kay, uh, you were trained on CPR, right? Not well. I mean, they taught us how to do it in school, but that was decades right. ago. So, but uh, did you, um, when you were doing this, were you um, at all trying to worry about what um, somebody um, across, you know, across from me was doing or saying? Do you remember well, every? It, it, it happened you? in her house, and we were pretty much alone. So uh, no. Well, well, yeah, that's gonna that's definitely gonna be something different. Yeah, but that's gonna um, be very different than an active shooter yeah. situation. Yeah. I, well, that's that's kind of my point is mm -hmm. is that I I was not in a life or death for me situation. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, like at the end of the day, it's a screwed up situation, and the fact that this happened is absolutely horrible. What's even more horrible is the fact that just three minutes into this video, we're beginning with these people, or Matt Powell at least, using this event for his own devices. And I yeah. find He's that disgusting. He's trying to build a straw man. Like all evolution, it, like somehow feel this way. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. evolutionist even is a, like a really bad term to use anyway. Yeah, yeah, like like it's some sort of uh, affiliation, like it's it's uh, a religion unto itself. Like like people go to evolutionist meetings, and I don't I, know. Have you guys paid your evolutionist tithes yet? I believe we need to be worshiping Beelzebub next Thursday, right? Uh, well, and, and the difference uh, between being an evolutionist and being religious is that our tithes are in blood. We meet Wednesdays <laughs> every night under the bridge. <laughs> That's where we play the D and Ds. And if if you forget to your, uh, <laughs> if you forget your origin of species book, then you're going to be the one that's sacrificed to be. Oh no! Don't worry. If you forget the origins of species, we've got one right there in the pew in front of you. It's right, it's right next to your satanic hymnal. And we put them in hotels right next to that Gideon Bible. Yes. <laughs> oh right. lordy. Let's let's continue the the silliness. We're only three minutes into this, and I'm. Mm. I did not take any headache medication. I really should have. You said you know I, I know. do. <laughs> Racial slurs were yelled at Isaiah Shoals as he was shot and killed simply because he was an African American. <laughs> Twelve students, the, one teacher, were about. murdered that day, along that with from? Dylan and Eric taking their own lives. The worldview of evolution was clearly influential behind the thinking of these two young wait men. A sec, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Okay. Uh, okay. If they thought they were, what, godlike or more highly evolved, and then they take their own lives at the end of it, it, it that makes no sense. Wouldn't they want to preserve themselves to further the evolution? Or are they thinking, no, it's just us. No one's allowed to have well, our DNA. It, I'm just, so wow, what's the, the logic? So the logic, the logic there is the same logic that happens in almost, with almost every other shooter. When you realize that you've done so much, you've got only a few options. Do you start trying to mentally cope with what you've done, or do you seek escape? And the fastest escape is suicide so even if they did think they were more highly evolved the subconscious is still going to put in that survival mechanism of what is the next step if the next step is shooting myself then that's the next step that's going to happen whether you think you're a god or not that's just <laughs> ingrained into your psychology and the thing is is they already they had to have already known that by this time the cops were there hmm. and so it was either have a firefight um, with the I mean, cops for instance, well, I'm surprised they didn't take yep. that option, frankly. I mean, if they were gods, they could fly, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Beauty god! Mm -mm -mm. Uh, anyway. We're accepting, expecting sense from psychopaths. Mm -hmm. Here at Columbine High School, eyewitnesses say that two gunmen came in shooting and began working their way through the school. At first, many students dismissed it as a prank until teachers raced ahead to classrooms, yelling for students to run. And then he came in Look at that picture, though. Isn't that and just a perfect example of the chaos that was, like, happening? And then he came Even through the, the pictures, you can't really tell what was happening. If we of color, and if we had a hat... Mm, pause that, pause that. Shot all around. If we had a hat? So he said... She just said that, um... They said that, um... They were gonna. Sh they were started shooting people 
who um i forgot what the thing was the color was but then um if and they also started shooting at us if we had a hat yeah so, what the hell is that about so so wait is, which one was it were they shooting people who had colors and were they shooting people who had a hat or were they shooting people who they knew believed in god which one is it? oh wait 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 wait, wait. i wait no i thought that was backward i thought oh i don't know i mean i mean when they say people who had colors i thought they meant people of color the well, uh, athletes that bullied them were actually kind of well known to wear like a specific hat. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. that makes more sense. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, so they're saying that that, but you know, of course, obviously, that translates to you're believing God somehow. I mean, I well, guess the the only I thought it was both. It w it was not. Like like wearing a hat and believing in God. I, I thought they were like shooting the bullies and then saying, "Do you believe in God?" Obviously, they didn't like that fact and killed you if you did. Mm. Mm. How often do you find like a religiously flamboyant person just like uh, walking around in regular life? Like you don't hear people talking about like God or Jesus just in the grocery store. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've seen people I don't think wearing you've like been in multiple Georgia. crosses, right? Out in public, multiple crosses, and it's like, okay. I, I would say, I would say, Sean, if you'd been, if you've been in Georgia, that's actually pretty common here. Yeah. All right. Yeah, is. I'll give you that. I'm probably <laughs> in a bit of a bubble, even if this is conservative, my little conservative pocket of California. But um, yeah, just religion isn't a topic people usually bring up. Like, I'm imagining that, like, students in high school, especially. That would be like something that when I was a, when I was a cashier, mm -hmm. it was about every f about every tenth person would make a comment regarding religion in some form or fashion. Yeah. It's yeah, it's Seattle and San Diego are not like that. No, I'd imagine I'd imagine not. Here, it's like there's a lot of oh God bless you or oh you know God is looking out for you. Be happy. Um, I I. Here in Texas, in this uh, very, very religious part that I live in, uh, you'll have people who sit there and uh, will grab your hand and say, just let Jesus bless your life today. That's yeah, that's a thing that we've we've had here. It, nobody's grabbed my hand and done that, but I've seen it done when I was working in a grocery store. Also, intellectual uh, in the chat said what part of Georgia. I would say what part of Georgia, but I really don't feel like doxing myself. Um, so I will simply say Georgia. What I, what I was trying to get at, though, is like um, there was probably a very small clique of like very outwardly religious people at this school. And there's... Oh, yeah, there always are. There, there, it, it wasn't something that like everybody was like um, probably like, you know, just talking about like any chance they got, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, it'd be really hard to select for just religiosity in um, oh, yeah. that kind of a setting. Alrighty, let's get back. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve students and one teacher were killed, and more than 25 seriously injured before the two teenage shooters took their own lives. I said, show that part. Huh. There, there's something I actually want to say about this uh, control the textbooks quote. Here. God wins law again. Well, and why why don't they? I mean, they insist that we teach religion alongside evolution, or even sometimes instead. And they're posting this. Like, let's just be real. This is a new independent fundamental and new independent fundamental Baptist uh, propaganda film, right? Mm. They're going to be course. probably distributing this. Uh, pretty widely to their followers uh, in DVD format and all that kind of stuff. Um, the I just want to point out some like sort of irony. Now, these new IFB people are really big on homeschooling. They actually mm -hmm. set up their own church homeschool programs, which would be more like a Christian school, but that's not the word they're going to use. Um, they strictly use three specific curriculums. And uh, you'll actually hear um, it written about in uh, Stephen Anderson's wife's blog. 
um i i forgot what their names are specifically but like uh oh aren't they controlling the textbooks in that way they're not they're not yes they are using um uh evolution and later on you know the big bang um yes. um they're also i'd like to interject um just for just for a second so i just looked up this quote apparently all of its attribution to hitler is misattribution it has mm -hmm. there's a longer version of this quote that is actually attributed to him but even that is a misattribution so this quote actually didn't come from his mouth in any way shape or form so i mean i just wanted to point out it's misinformation while i was thinking about it please continue sean Ooh. Yeah. I was just trying to say they're really big on controlling information and not letting you um, seek any outside opinion. And um, so they're you take the to uh, demonize evolution and um, any uh, sort of explanatory uh, science of the universe as a whole. And um, yeah. that's almost exactly like what this quote is, what is saying right mm -hmm. here. I mean, I'm not going to say they're literally Hitler, but like... <laughs> Oh, but there, don't, don't misattribute them with Hitler. That's what they do. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little self-awareness. It's all we ask. Yeah, yeah, the thing is, is if you replace, if you put their uh, church or school or whatever as the state, they're controlling their uh, their whole entire people with these sex books that don't teach accurate science. And instead, they make sure that at the beginning of everything, it says, you know, oh, God created all this, and that's how this is going. That's how this happens. Uh, Lisa for Truth in the chat said, please read the quote. The quote is, if you let me control the textbooks, I will control the state. It is attributed to Adolf Hitler. Um, the actual quote that this is derived from is the best way to take control over a people and control them utterly is to take a little bit of their freedom at a time to erode their rights by a thousand tiny and almost imperceptible reductions. In this way, people will not see those rights and freedoms being removed until past to the point where those changes cannot be reversed. That is the original quote that this is derived from, and even that quote was misattributed. So, no. Um, this is the quote there, and it is, in the words of uh, Donald Tramp, it is fake news. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Can I just point out that Matt Powell needs a better editor? There's yeah, so many pauses here that need something. Charles Darwin's book, uh, The Origin of Species. Kids! Oh, boy. Oh, yay. Don't you just love him? This is going to get fun. Uh, and I still that... say it's probably a cornucopia, but that looks like some sort of brain slug behind him on the shelf. I'm ninety percent yeah. certain it's just a very articulate dildo. <laughs> he just he just puts he just puts a regular one, and he's like, "Man, I can't handle this thing straight anymore. I need one that's as crooked as me." That blue thing, I have one of those. <laughs> it's got a cork through asshole. <laughs> Are you saying Kent is a duck? <laughs> <laughs> This is often I'm what they saying, call simply the quack, origin quack. of species. This is not the whole title. They're kind of embarrassed by the whole title today because he was a racist. Of course, in 1859, most people were racist. America still had slavery in 1859. But the whole title to his book is The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. Darwin okay, thought that... Okay, pause the there. Because, because the races in this, uh, in this context does not mean races of humans. It means races of different individual creatures. Yeah, but I believe Darwin, uh, viewed instance, Darwin viewed humans as just one race, as far as I remember. Yeah, he did. He was, he was very yes. unitarian yes. in that sense. Probably the wrong fucking word, but... Uh, yeah, and he maybe he even chose it just because he'd races. already used species. Yes, and the thing is, is... Um, is the fact that races, uh, so like you'll have a race of humans, you have a race of cats, you have a race of dogs, you have a race of everything. And so it doesn't just mean uh, the races as far as, you know, oh, um, here, you know, of what you call it, of different races as in 
the color of people's skin. Another fun fact, Darwin's parents are actually uh, very um, active abolitionists, and um, Darwin was heavily influenced by their ideas. So, so, um, so this entire idea that Darwin was this, like, giant racist asswipe is just dumb. Yeah, it's completely bullshit. I mean, yeah, anybody could take an idea and then twist it to whatever they, you know, want to fucking sell. But, like, that's that's not what, what Darwin was trying to get at. No. No. He was not trying to get that at all. Not in that book. Man, no. we are only five and almost a half minutes in. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. This is going to be a long project. And I'm... I, for one, don't know if if I'm ready. (laughs) There were different races of humans, different races of animals, and the strongest survived, and that was good. It was best if the weakest died off. This, of course, motivated Adolf Hitler to speed up the process. Let's figure out who's the weakest and eliminate him, and we can speed up the the evolution of mankind. So, yeah, Darwin uh, certainly was a racist, but I think you could say most people were during that time frame. That's... It's when you see the term favorite races, like the that tells you a lot about the, the guy who's writing the book race. and what his ideology is. Uh, yeah. He believes that some races are more favorable than others. He thinks that some races are further evolved. Oh boy, than we got others. Steven Anderson we in have here. Grown My as favorite. a species because of the tools we make, and each generation, just... the tools get more advanced. It's how it's been, and it's how it always will be. Spontaneous generation must be true, not because it had been proven in the laboratory, mm. but because about otherwise this for a sec? it would be sure. Uh, fucking but spontaneous before... generation. Wait, hold on, hold on. Before we get into that, I have to say, um, so the whole entire um, natural selection, survival of the fittest thing, was never about the weakest or strongest race. It literally just means the race that was more favored to reproduce successfully mm-hmm. over and c- keep adding on to the adding on to the population well, I mean, that was all that it fucking meant i mean yeah. that's, that's if, what we if, observe if anyway fucking you're not mm-hmm. the fittest that's how it goes exactly and so for them to uh and it, it, it's really a very common misconception because they um because it's uh you know survival of the fittest and people the very first thing that they think when they think fittest is your physically fitness and so it's one of those yeah. that just really makes me mad whenever people still use in when it's been corrected already like sometimes a completely like a complete wuss bag species that can hide better from their prey that or from their predators than anyone else mm-hmm. is the fittest even though they're not the most badass Exactly. Like, take, for instance, a butterfly. I mean, like, most butterflies um, are not at all harmful. And so how, how would that have survived if it was literally whatever the strongest race was? Now, go ahead and talk about the uh, quote there, Sean. So this Ernst Ankle quote is, like, taking way out of context. He actually uh, believed in evolution. And um, spontaneous generation and evolution aren't even the same fucking thing. It's abiogenesis. Uh, Oh, they always get that wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Spontaneous generation was this very odd belief that if you left out, like, fucking cheese in a rag in the corner of your room, magically rats and flea, I mean, uh, flies and uh, gnats and shit will appear there. Not because they were, um, you know, uh, brought there because of the smell of rotting cheese, but because they magically appeared. Nobody nobody of any like uh, credible stature believes in spontaneous generation. It's it's a completely bullshit idea. I could see how uh, this this quote can uh, can eschew some sort of uh, negative interpretation of people who believe in evolution, but like uh, it's not what it what it was supposed to, it's not what he was talking about. This is probably before uh, Darwin even like came up with this theory to begin with. Now uh, it says co-founder of evolution, like somehow it was some something he started. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I always forget about uh, that. They've been using oh, this and... co-founder thing. Like he yeah. he 
Yeah, he came up with it too. He tried to build off some ideas, but that's fun fact. Wait. It didn't even start with Darwin. No, Darwin just had the most accurate uh, perception of it at the time. Aristotle exactly. had his own version of it. Uh, Lamarck had his own version of it, and those versions mm-hmm. were proven to be incorrect and failed. Um, Arist- Aristotle's version of it, the version that we know as Aristotle's ladder, basically said that as a species, uh, as a species exists for longer and longer, the newest of the species becomes better and better and better and better to the point where they would ascend up what was called Aristotle's ladder. Problem is in evolution, we don't see that. What we see in evolution is animals that adapt to their environments. For instance, if you have a polar bear with a coat that is getting you know wider and wider because that helps the baby survive to the point where they can reproduce, when you put that polar bear in the middle of a forest with a grizzly, which one of those two is going to survive more? The one that's colored like the trees and thus can avoid predators when it's a kid? Or the one that's colored like a sore thumb that's sticking out? Exactly. Yeah, that's one of the biggest things that always just makes me mad. But I guess let's go because we've only been in six minutes. Six minutes in, 36 minutes into the stream, and I already feel the little scissors going up my nose trying to perform the lobotomy. Be necessary to believe in a creator. To have somebody say that something must be true, well, why? Or else what? The or else is, if that's not true, then there must be a God, there must be a moral law, there must be a final authority. Wait, how does, all authority... Of, how does all of that come from that? Yeah. I, wait. That's... How do you get to more? How do you get to there must be a moral law, which implies the moral law must be divine command theory. Um, how do you get to there must be a creator, and that creator's still around? Because you could still end up having a fucking deistic god that just put everything in motion and then died. And congratulations, you've got a god at the beginning of everything and a bunch of atheists who are still correct. How do you how do you suddenly get all of that from just a first cause? I, I don't get that. I don't because my Bible. <laughs> my bible said so exactly that's that's literally how a lot of these people uh respond is like you sit there and give them an answer that they really can't defend and it's like well my bible says so that's that's it well it's like they always take that flying that's leap that's a- from here's a god to it's my god now whenever i ask them how do you know it's not like zeus or Ra or something they always sort of hem and haw and just go oh, it's my god well, that's why, like, the, the honest approach, right, and there's not a lot of Christians that take this mm-hmm. approach, but the honest approach is probably just taking, like, henotheism, where God is at the top of a pantheon, and there's all the other gods are still affirmed, they're just not stronger than Yahweh. Like, that's, that's probably the more honest approach, but that approach almost never happens. I've seen maybe two people who've taken that approach before. Two! And I've done over a hundred response videos, and none of them are addressed in my response videos. But I, I'm gonna kind of make a liar of myself when I said before that San Diego is not super religious. But I help staff an atheism booth in Balboa Park on Saturdays, and there's also this booth of like rabid and screaming Christians. And I actually asked one of them, like hypothetically, if you die and go to an afterlife and you discover that there is a God, but it's not your God, how would you react? And all he would say was, but I know my God is real. And I was like, yeah, but just pretend for a moment, hypothetically. And he's like, no, I know my God is real. I won't do it. He just would Mm -hmm. not even consider the notion. You know what's funny about that, isn't it? So if if they can't, and obviously not all Christians are this way. I don't want to straw man all Christians because I have Christian friends who are way smarter than this level of stupid. Um, But the people who are at this level, and they're the people I'm addressing, so your NIFBs, your Young Earth Creationists, nine times out of ten, we usually find this. We find what Kate just described, where they can't engage in a hypothetical. And then when we engage in a hypothetical saying, if God existed, 
this, you know, insert something here. Or we say, if God existed and he's the God that's existed in the Bible, mm -hmm. then he's a moral monster. That's all part of hypothetical thinking, because we don't think that that God exists. But we're willing to engage him as if he exists for the sake of a conversation. But the minute we do that, and I'm sure everybody here has had this experience. Ha ha! Ha ha! You wouldn't be thinking that way if you didn't really think a God existed. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, it's a hypothetical. Exactly. It's not hard. It's not yeah. difficult. A two-year-old, not a two-year-old, probably, that's, that's, that's not fair. Sorry, a six-year-old, there we go. A six-year-old can engage in a hypothetical. Well, and then you get the people who are like, <laughs> well, uh, it, like they make that argument. And then I say, well, I, I don't believe Darth Vader is real, but I'm willing to discuss what it's like if he was. Yeah, so I don't think like, I don't think Vader's real. An otherwise fictional character, and they cannot understand, like like how you eh, whatever you've said I, it already. And I don't. But the the funny thing is, is though, is like uh, when it doesn't have to be about the god itself, they're more than happy to engage in hypotheticals. I've had several of these uh, people do hypotheticals when it comes to abortion. They will sit there and. They say, oh, well, well, this is how this, what if, what if this happens? What if this, 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 would this, would you then consider it a life? And it's like, you are now engaging in hypotheticals, but whenever it comes to the God question, it's just, no, nope, nope, can't do it. See, it's, it's funny, Wait. in the question of abortion, um, <laughs> like, I'm willing to grant full personhood from the point of conception and still make the violinist argument, I think it still holds, and they'll just be like, well, that only works if you don't grant personhood, I'm like, I did. I granted I full it. bodily personhood well, for my a, argument. A little bit <laughs> off topic, but I actually had this weird argument where someone was against abortion because they're a vegan. Um, I'm like, why? <laughs> and they're all, because you're taking a life. I'm like, you know, but taking a if, life. I don't but, know. But was, what if that child grew argument. up to be a meat eater? <laughs> <laughs> Better yet, better yet. Let's take it. Let's take it to the extreme. What if that child was the cause of all animal suffering? As opposed to the, what if this child it, is the cure for cancer? It's what if this child is like the next the next Hitler, but this child happens to be a Hitler specifically for all animal life. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What if that happens? Hmm? Oh, Lord, yeah, no, I I don't I don't see the correlation between veganism and abortion. I don't. It was crazy, and I don't understand yeah. why a hypothetical can be so hard to engage in when that topic comes up. But I'm gonna hit the play button and suffer. <laughs> that means that he must have to answer to somebody. So it just seems like a cheap cop out to say that something must be true or else. It's like, oh, what's the or else? The or else is that you have to answer to somebody. And that somebody is bigger than you. He was the co-founder of evolution. So it shows that Ernst ah, Haeckel and Charles Darwin mm, were some is. of the most biased scientists on the face of the planet. Him and his little rosy cheeks. Ernst Haeckel was a contemporary of Charles Darwin. And Ernst Haeckel uh, loved the idea of evolution and so much that he decided to fake some evidence. He was determined to help Charles Darwin's book become successful by basically about well, basically flat out this is actually really bullshit evidence uh, there, this argument didn't even come up until like the 80s uh this accusation that he was like um fucking accused of fraud or whatever and um uh we we gotta get a little a little more into this because there's there's not well, a lot of details yet but um, what was up with the hand yeah, so, bandages did you see that i did like they were they were, they were what is that he always has bandages on him he must be he must be doing some really rigorous stuff out there at the at Dinosaur Adventure Land. Yes. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was, it was the guy who was, like, supposed to be Darwin or something had, like, blood-covered bandages on his hands. Well, of course he was using that so that way he could sacrifice his blood to <laughs> Satan. Well, of course. I, mean, I don't know what film they grabbed that from, so I don't know the context as to why. If anybody in the chat knows what film they grabbed that clip from so they can give us the context for why his hands were bandages. Ban ban his hands were bandages. <laughs> his hands were bandaged. Yeah. That would be awesome because I am curious now as well and I don't have an answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, but now so to answer uh, Sean's question there, 
So this whole entire thing came from the fact that um, that Heichel it, drew. He he sat there and he drew embryos from you know um, different animals, and noticed that they all looked the same, or roughly around the same thing. And he assumed, well, not he. He really what happened was he just kind of mused with the idea that um, the embryo goes through every stage of. Um, of its uh, of the evolutionary development as it goes through. Now, uh, in How a did way, the embryo but... survive with half an eye, Russ. Checkmate, oh, well. tits. <laughs> <laughs> yes, checkmate up for us athy tits. But, There's uh, the vestigial rem- remnants, like uh, the of I forgot, like phalangeal gill slits or something like that. Well, the thing is, is actually we know that uh, those aren't gill slits. In um, yeah, I in I didn't think the last word was right, but like. What these were were these were just um, so though that part of the embryo actually, if I'm not mistaken, becomes the lungs, whereas uh, for a fish that's where it gets the gill slits. But um, but still, I mean, he wasn't exactly wrong, but he wasn't right either. And so whenever they found out that he was, you know, he wasn't right, that that's not ex- exactly what happens. If well, they, if, he ahead. was he was actually um, very very close to accurate. The whole reason oh, why his drawings were off were because of the uh, imaging techniques from uh, back mm-hmm. in his time. They weren't as nearly as um, fucking powerful. Also, no. you'll find that uh, the creationists who uh, take pictures of uh, these embryos will leave in a lot of material that uh, Ernst Hankel purposely left out. And it all belongs to the mother as well, which is why he left it out in the first place, like the yolk sacs and other maternal like uh, materials. So um, he left that out in order to uh, exaggerate these. Well, not really exaggerate, but to fully show well, the similarities of uh, yeah the embryo. Uh, Beach, I see a kid. Uh, yeah, Beach Price just um, just reminded me. Um, he only used them as drawings uh, to make it or easier or. as a teaching tool. As well, yeah. he used these drawings as a teaching tool, and that was just about it. it. Was like, hey, this makes it easier, so that way you don't have to go and find a embryo of these different animals. So, do you think these god botherers know how dishonest they're being, or are they actually? Do they really believe that? What they're saying is accurate. So well, I think it, I think I, for some people it for some people I think that they are they know they're being dishonest. But for most of them, I think they just spend so much time in their echo chamber that they think that's how things are. Yeah. Uh, for instance, I know I, I believe that in a lot of these arguments, I think that Kent Hovind definitely is, knows he's being dishonest yeah. because he's been corrected several times on different things. Look at and, that face and tell me that's stop. honest. Well, what do you expect? I mean, he's a total jailbird. Yeah, and it's funny because like, um, it wasn't until real recently that he he didn't admit that he was wrong, but he's since then shied away from the whole entire um, mammoth, uh, the two different mammoths. Uh, what was it? The um, carbon dating of of. Uh, with two different answers from the si- single mammoth, mm-hmm. even though that really what happened was it was two different specimens and whatnot. But he just he just keeps uh, he just keeps using certain arguments over and over again, even though people have sat there and said, "Look, this is where you're wrong." And it just sounded like Russ was trying to get some not Russ, but uh, Sean was trying to get something out a few seconds ago. Yeah, go I was going to say that uh, Kent Hovind, Matt Powell, and Stephen Anderson. Especially uh, Steven Anderson and Kent Hovind. Um, I could definitely buy the fact that they're uh, misrepresenting like the data. There's no way that uh, through all their years and experience like uh, dealing with, with people that they uh, somehow just missed out on the facts. You know what I mean? But um, mm-hmm. we, we, bo- we all know that uh, Kent Hovind has his Dinosaur Adventureland mm-hmm. weird indoctrination organization and steven anderson has the nifb uh they were both uh well steven anderson and matt powell have both uh 
were also both heavily indoctrinated by uh, the old IFB organization. They both went to uh, church-ran homeschools. Uh, no, he, no, Matt, I, I heard that Kent Hovind got his uh, he he got his uh, his his PhD <laughs> from Bible University. I hear it's a very accredited Hovind college. Anderson, yeah, he got his uh, fucking PhD through like a, a trailer. Trade college. Right? It's a fucking, you got he it out of a fucking like trailer. a hundred dollars for it or something like that. <laughs> it's pretty fucking funny. But, um, what I was trying to get at is like, uh, Steven Anderson and, uh, Matt Powell have spent their whole lives as part of this weird, um, IFB, uh, spent their whole lives in this weird IFB like reality. And, um, <laughs> it, it goes a lot farther than just uh, demonizing, um, what's it called, uh, evolution and uh, the Big Bang Theory as to being completely fraudulent ideas. They also think, like, uh, the Jews are controlling the media in order to make everybody gay and um, <laughs> tons of other... The Jews are turning the freaking people gay! Uh, I've, <laughs> I've, I've got the downloaded documentaries. It's, it's, I, it's pretty insane. But. I still want to know how they think, like, like LGBT folk, like myself, lesbian over here, tell you you cannot choose your sexuality. I mean, we flat out say you can't do it, but they're all like, yeah, but they're trying to make our kids gay. It's like we won't even try because we There's don't think it's possible. Hello? Like, take a few seconds to go on SciShow and just, like, watch a few videos. Like, it points you in the right direction if you're interested. And the thing is, is what really, really, really cracks me up is how he will sit there and um, and say that, you know, oh, I, I really I cannot stand these homosexuals while preaching out of a Bible that was uh, made for a homosexual king to keep to have his uh, lifestyle justified. It still seems pretty anti-LGBT to me, but um. Well, the thing is, is he still he uh he had the Bible itself, uh, done well, where it was. Uh, it was a lot easier to be anti um. To for you to be able to be uh, homosexual and still be able to uh. It just leaves in an extra couple of loopholes. I mean, there's no doubt that yeah. I mean it was edited for his uh purposes or whatever but mm -hmm. i haven't still I haven't heard they're that still it was, using it to justify it and it's yeah i haven't heard that it was edited to be more pro lgbt just because of the the king um i just kind of take it as it is and as it is if i don't exegete the bible it's incredibly homophobic if i do exegete the bible and i go to the original greek and hebrew it's much less homophobic but it's still there in romans Mm. So the current version, a literal translation of the current version of the Bible is incredibly homophobic if you don't exegete it to the original, uh, the original languages. And even if you do, you end up showing that Leviticus is less harsh than its original, or less harsh than the literal translation. But you find that Romans ends up being much worse, because in Romans it says that homosexuality is one of the things that keeps you out of heaven and let makes you burn in hell. Whereas in Leviticus it ends up turning into, like, pagan ritual sex is what they were talking about. Um, it's yeah. it's really weird when you look at, like, the original translations for some of that stuff. It doesn't make it not homophobic. It just makes it more weird. <laughs> His bias toward uh. wanting this theory to be true. There are some people who want desperately for evolution to be true. Otherwise, <laughs> there must be a god. Wait, what? What? How would evolution being f if evolution is false, that just means that there's some there's some other mechanism there. It does not automatically mean God. It's probably so, just him thinking that evolution and abiogenesis Jesus. are the same thing again. That's got to be it. it, it has not only to that, be. not only that, but the thing is, is he's uh, conflating evolution as the uh, you know that ch things change over time, and uh, the the natural via natural selection as well because even it because things change over time this is something that is known i mean you are not the exact uh replica of your parents 
and so the common cold can't be fought because it is evolving faster than we can make medicine for it exactly so things are changing over time so that's a given now whenever you add on by means of natural selection that's where people start having that's where these people start having issues with it and so the thing is is even if evolution by natural selection turned out to be false evolution is still true it annoys the shit out of me when people say it's random though i mean it's like sort of a guided process by the environment Mm -hmm. yes i can try i'll do my best let's see ernst takel went over to germany and he drew these fake drawings of a human embryo and a dog embryo to make them look exactly alike. He was convicted of fraud by his own secular university. In the same textbooks that you studied in school and that any public schooler for the past 130 years has studied are from Ernst Haeckel. So he believed spontaneous generation had to happen. That is, life had to start from non-living material. Otherwise, there would have to be a creator to create it. I I would agree, there there was a creator. I happen to know him personally. I happen to know him personally. It wasn't like they just went into the laboratory and just came to the conclusion that there's no God. No, they set out to prove that there is no God. They set out with a presupposition saying, all our scientific claims are going to be without God. You brought Look at the projections there. Darwin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Charles Darwin. <laughs> they uh, presupposed I, I that's agree bad. I with most of what I read, yes. Okay. So Charles Darwin's book, The The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection. I've read it. Yeah, I've read it. Do you know what the other title of that book is? Mm. No. Okay. The other title of the book, and it's the original title of that book, is The Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. That's the title of his book. Wait a minute. Hold on. So, okay. So the beginning of the movie, they said the, the original title of the book was The Origin of Species and blah, 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 blah. In here, Matt is saying that the original title of the book excluded The Origin of Species, and it was just the racist caricature of it that he wanted to make. So which one is it, Matt? Which one is it? The answer is yes. I think he changes the information to suit the situation that he's in. Well, well I know is, that's what he talking, does. He's talking to an atheist, so he's thinking that, it, it, and whenever he says, have you heard the original name? And he's like, no. And he's like, oh, okay, now I can just say whatever the fuck I want to. Exactly. Um, Godless Recovery says that the video they keep using is a PBS documentary on Darwin. Can't remember the exact name. Something along the lines of Darwin's Great Idea or Darwin's Dilemma. Um, they said they're going to look it up further. So that gives us awesome. a little bit uh, of information there. And apparently the person that they've showed with the bandaged hands is, is Ernst Hagel. Um, uh-huh. So that gives us a little more insight as to what is going on there. But... Uh, The strongest survived. Natural selection favors certain race. The human race was the strongest of the hominids. We have, I mean, that's proven. We, we destroyed the Neanderthals when we came in contact with them because the Neanderthals came out of Afri- Africa 20,000 years before we did. They, they weren't allowed to continue to evolve, and we absolutely destroyed oh. them. Wait. Okay, no, I, I have an issue here. Yeah, right. Allowed he is was the wrong word. Not only that, but the thing is, is we, did, we weren't the strongest. We were the smartest. We had the it's, better brain. A lot of what happened is that hom- uh, the species that ultimately evolved into Homo sapiens sapien, we started domesticating animals for use, and that's mm-hmm. what ha- that lowered our hunter-gatherer labor. It allowed us to survive mm-hmm. into longer and harsher winters, and it allowed us to continue. Whereas when you look at the when you look at Neanderthals, they did not domesticate animals anywhere near to the point that we did and so they were surviving up as a species on their own they were never able to have an agricultural revolution they only had yeah. hunter gathering up until the point where they died off that's not the same thing as we destroyed them and we didn't allow them to do this no you no know, as a matter <laughs> as a matter of fact as a matter of fact i think it's for 500 years um homo sapien sapien and Neanderthal had lived together. Yeah, we breed. Well, we, still, we still have some Neanderthal yeah. DNA in us. Mm-hmm. 
I think it's like, what, three-ish percent? But the idea that we didn't allow them to... I saw that um, Beige pointed out in the chat that no one knows why they went extinct. There are many ideas, and there's been more than one reason. I agree that there's more than one reason, mm -hmm. but I would, I would hedge a few bets that one of the reasons was not we did not allow another race of human beings to survive. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, there, were, there was definitely a conflict between the two species because, well... I mean, let's face it. That's human nature in general. Is that's animal nature in general? We, you know, we see something that we don't like. We we end up causing problems with each other, and things like that happen. But there, that's not the one hundred percent. You know, oh yeah, we just went off and said, "Fuck it, we're not what gonna we let did is do whatever." We, we found out how to make nukes out of rock and clay, and we nuked the <laughs> Neanderthals. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and you had this one, you had this one, uh, this one uh, Homo sapiens sapien that you know was speaking the gibberish that they were speaking at the time, and then it translated to, um, "Sir, we're going to drop this nuke on you now." Okay, okay. <laughs> we need to build the nuke. We need to build the clay nuke. It's going to be Everybody, huge. It's going to be the biggest nuke there is. Everyone's go we're going to uh, get sticks. And we're going to build this wall around our encampment, and we're going to make the Neanderthals do it. I think I think we've officially delved into absurdity, not unlike the movie we're watching. Um, incidentally, guys, my internet is going a bit wonky, so if I end up going out, just understand it's not because I hate you. Oh, don't worry, Kate. I know that I'm going to get a whole bunch of hate messages on Facebook after this. <laughs> <laughs> Wipe them off the face of the earth. Evolution is unproved and unprovable. We believe it because the only alternative is special creation, and that is unthinkable. What? All this like appeal to authority the terror that he was feeling. <laughs> Where do they even pull that quote from? Him, thinking about it, God, I, thinking about having to answer to somebody. You know, this must be the case. A lot of people say because they know that there will be I'm repercussions if it's not the case. Now, when you say that something must be true, that means you're going to try to find evidence that proves your case. Now, if it must be true, why does he believe it must be true? What's he hiding? Hiding? Yeah. Ernst Haeckel was convicted of fraud by his own secular university. His textbooks are still in our schools today. You know, I understand it takes a while to get textbooks updated, but 130 years, he was convicted of fraud 130 years ago. There is Here's an agenda behind this. There's no school that uses Ernst Haeckel's textbooks in in their class. Usually, you get like a biology textbook from like uh, Myers or something like that. Or at least that's the one I'm usually uh, more attributed to. But yeah. Ernst Haeckel might be brought up in one of those books, but like it's not his books that we're using. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're trying to set him up as some sort of demagogue. And by yeah. the way, that quote that quote was a very, very, very pop it's a very popular quote line. Um also so this is the Wikipedia article on it. The supposed quote is used in an attempt to demonstrate that Sir Arthur Keith simply dismisses the creationist viewpoints outright due to a presumed anti theistic bias. However, in attempting to research this statement, one finds it is usually it usually appears without any primary source documentation. In those instances where seemingly original documentation is provided, it is stated to be a foreword of a cent uh, centennial edition or a 100th edition of Origin of Species. However, several facts show that this attribution of these words is erroneous. So it's a completely fake quote. It's then. a fake quote. It's not even a quote mine. It's a fake quote. Wow. wow. <laughs> uh, just uh. just just wait till they get to that uh fucking 99 I mean 90% of a uh, fucking species appearing at once bullshit. Like I don't <laughs> like the difference between something like this or when uh when Kent Hoven would go on stage, right? Like, you know, 20 years ago. Kent Hoven would go on stage and he would do his presentation or his debate in a church. He would always do he would always do shit like this where he would say something and then it would just be swept under the rug and it would just be a little like gnat in your mind. One more thing in your book that you could use against 
evolution or science or whatever, you know, whatever he was preaching mm-hmm. against at that point. Unfortunately for, you know, Maddie Boy here, we have the glorious ability to pause things and fact check them now. All right. <laughs> also, uh, intellectual, and... in- intellectual iconoclasm, uh, $5 super chat, Matt Powell versus Jesus is a... I have no idea what word he's censoring. Um, shit. I think it's shit. <laughs> Jesus. S H I, nope. There's 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 four censored letters there. Sexit. I don't know. I don't know what that word is supposed to be. Um, it says set it up. Uh, wait a minute. Is it? He, talking- he said it, it's supposed to be slut, but again, there's an extra. Oh, um, oh, I yeah. get it now. It's the Jesus is polyamorous guy that I did a video oh, on. That. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. I would love to see that because it's two people who don't understand the book arguing with one another. <laughs> well, you know, uh, well, you know, um, polyamorous guy, uh, the Bible says that, you know, that... Uh, that, that, that Jesus is definitely not that way at all, no. That video got posted in a polyamory uh, Facebook group that I'm in. And when it was posted in there, I pointed out... <laughs> I pointed out that you guys realize that, like, the Bible talks about polygamy, right? Not polyamory. And one person was like, no, polyamory was practiced in Judea. Here's my Wikipedia article on it. And it was... The Wikipedia article was polygamy oh. in Judea. And I'm like... <laughs> Dude! <laughs> Dude, you don't oh, understand. Man. It's it was, it was silly. Wow, that's you did, did what, what? Oh my god. There's why? Just why? There's there's so much madness in the world, and Matt is just stroking the flames. Stroking the flames. I like. Before it. you start, I just. But before oh. you start, I just want to say. It's all Cycler's fault. Play it. It's all Cycler's fault? Yes. Okay, that's fine. A lot of times atheists will make fun of us because they say, you know, we, we believe that we believe in a book that's been written by man. Here's the thing. All their textbooks have been written by man, and they believe all those textbooks, and they don't question that for a second. You know, when they see all those embryos that, you know, supposedly all the embryos from all the different animals look exactly like humans, when they see those embryos that were drawn by Ernst Haeckel, you know, they just accept that as fact, but they won't do the research and see that in the early 1900s that was proven false. Ernst Haeckel was shown to be a liar, he was shown to be fraudulent, but somehow those pictures of those falsified embryos are still in textbooks today, but they'll believe it. They're just basing it all off the fact of, of that they don't want to believe in God. If you tell a kid long enough, hey, you're an animal, you're an animal, you're an animal, eventually they're just going to break down and feel like they're worthless and that they're not made in the image what? of God. Hey, the Bible... That has... Being an animal mm. does not make you worthless. What? What? Where is he getting the, that from? The idea that I am a monkey does not make me feel worthless. It makes me feel depressed that I can't climb a tree as well as my ancestors could. <laughs> That's what it does. <laughs> and and you know what? When he's... Uh, the one guy, he was trying to make that argument where it's like, well, they say the Bible was written by man. Yeah, so were all your textbooks. Well, the whole point is that it wasn't Ooh. written by a god. Uh, being written by a man has nothing to do with, with whether or not uh, we're willing to read it and, and possibly accept it and consider it critically. It's just like they try to claim that their book is extra special because magic, and it's not. Well, it's also it's also when you're when you're dealing with stuff like this. We so we've mentioned so far it began with an appeal to emotion, which is a fallacious method of argumentation. We. At, at some point, there was another fallacy that popped up. Um, Atheist Rationale mentioned it earlier. Um, I can't remember which one it was. Oh, the appeal to authority, because they kept doing yeah. the quote mines as an appeal to authority. Um, the the fallacy here is to quote quote. It's whataboutism. It's mm-hmm. you say our Bible is written by men. Well, what about your books? They're well, written I'm- by men, too. I'm looking at this headline, shooting suspects seen as angry outcasts. What does that have to do with them going, oh, I'm an animal, I'm worthless? It's completely They're trying to equate these kind of tragedies with people that believe autism. I mean, mm. why the fuck? People that How believe did that evolution. come in? 
I have no idea. <laughs> I believe I believe autism. Godless Island's one of my best friends. <laughs> I don't know why the fuck that came out. I'm sorry. But yeah, for people that believe <laughs> ev evolution, they're trying to, like, I mean, um... <laughs> look, look, we, the, we see the, your the true colors now. Uh, oh, like, the the only thing that made those shooters feel worthless was their classmates, most of whom really? apparently believed in God. And, and what's God. worse is they're hounding them over, like, sexuality and all that stuff. If they really, like, feel that way, imagine, like, the sort of isolation that's, like, pushing, I mean, pushing onto them. You know what I mean? I mean, like, that's got to be terrible. Also, I can't help but notice that the S is cut off, so it looks like hooting suspects, which <laughs> makes you wonder about owls. But anyway. Made us in his own image. <laughs> now, it's, now it's just ing suspects. <laughs> but I just put it said hooting suspects seen as angry outcasts. It's becoming more and more prevalent today as time moves on. Our school shooting is contain. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna this is it popular or trending. Okay, like like it is so cool to be a school shooter, and I want to be just like those guys. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Does this mean that I can take some school shootings medicine? <laughs> Do yeah, I have well, to go into quarantine? What, the thing is, what what I think well, is look, interesting. If, if school shootings. Well, but hold on before you continue. If school shootings are contagious, that means the school itself are getting these. So, does this, do we give the school medicine? Well, What's obviously, going on here? the anti-vaxxers want shootings to keep happening. Obviously. God damn! Oh. I caught the, Wellington Smith goes. I caught the shootings like I caught the gay. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I've come down with a bad case of school shootings. I don't. I don't know I just, if I can I just come into work today. Uh, uh, and I got to stay off the roads because I may drive by a school, and then who knows what might happen. Suicide rates have skyrocketed since evolution's been taught in schools. Children being aborted has skyrocketed ever since evolution's been brought into schools. You know, death and murder about, has like, post hoc ergo oh, proctor hoc. Oh, That's oh, like yeah. <laughs> not only, but the thing is, is not only is that a clear lie because actually abortions are on the decrease they're going down as the years go by so how on earth is that even how is that where is he getting this from well and the only form of birth control that they're willing to accept that these religionoids are willing to accept is not fucking like you can't use condoms you can't use birth control you can't have abortions nothing like if if you're gonna have sex it had better be for procreation oh but don't masturbate don't masturbate that would be bad too don't you be mm. watching any of that porno that's the bad what's kind of ridiculous about this claim though is like murder rates of actual i mean uh crime in general has actually been going down mm. for a while mm. so like where does this even come from it's there's there it doesn't have any any basis in fact He's just trying to develop the straw man. So he can burn it. Of course. <laughs> Skyrocketed ever since we brought it into the schools and it's infiltrating and it's messing with the minds of the young people and of the next generation. And as a college student, I look at that and I think, wow, if they only knew the evidence, if they only knew the true science that the Bible speaks of, but also the science that is so right and so plain before their eyes. Well, at least this one, at least this lie is not a, not lie, but this one's not a misattribution. As far as I've been able to tell, mm -hmm. the, the quote, make the lie big, make it simple, keep saying it, and eventually they'll believe it. At least that one they got right, but I don't think they realize that by putting that quote in their movie, they're shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah. Yeah, God exists. That's a yeah. big lie. It's very simple, and they say it over and over. And people will believe it. Completely glossing over the 26,000-some mm. peer-reviewed articles that support evolution. <laughs> um, that's just be... I was just... You okay, Ross? You there? Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, I was just... Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I was just saying I was, what Sean had said. Um, 
uh, he said that peer review is like, well, uh, their answer for that is it's all a conspiracy. Ah, yes, and I'm part of the conspiracy. I get my shill money every Tuesday. <laughs> well, yeah. I'd probably have some working headphones if, you know, I was part of this shill conspiracy. Same I'm here. using a sock, man. <laughs> I was using I was using a sock uh, for my microphone for a while, thanks to Godless Cranium. And he was like, oh, yeah, if you can't afford a pop filter, use a sock. And I'm like, thanks. That is the best <laughs> advice I've heard. No, this is all an act, man. I actually live in a far, I mean, a 200 bedroom mansion. It's it's pretty sick. It's pretty sick. Cool. No. That's awesome. <laughs> do, do you have any of the gay all that sexes? show money, man? Got do you have any of the pools. gay sexes in any of those bedrooms? Because the gods wouldn't like that. Oh, uh, only every Thursday. Yeah, only every Thursday. Okay, it's fine on Thursday. That's for Thor. He's fine. Yeah. He doesn't care about butt stuff. Yeah, he's really into it. Uh, apparently, anyway. PewDiePie. Apparently, PewDiePie is in NASA JPL chat. Wait, what? Sorry, Brian had just said that in the chat. Brian said that LOL PewDiePie and NASA JPL chat. I don't know what NASA JPL is. That just so it just I don't either. It just it's something that I thought was funny I said out loud. My bad. <laughs> it's okay. I just I just wish I understood what it meant. <laughs> Maybe don't like flat earthers or something too, right? <laughs> We just, we just yeah, hold made a better editor. A way better editor. Let me first tell you where I'm coming from. I believe that God created the world. Yeah. I believe that there's only two worldviews. Either one has to believe that somehow uh, God created the world, like I would hold to, um, or you'd have to hold to another faith position, which is the world created itself. Okay, so what about a different god creating the world that's not your god? Uh, what about that? Yeah, they don't really well, have anything. It's that you have to hold to a position rather than, I'm not sure yet, let's find out. Yeah, you could just be agnostic on the position. You just be completely ambivalent towards the entire idea. And like, yeah. that's, that's fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the problem with people who are in religion is they assume other people are as dedicated and committed to their position as they are in the same way. Ugh, the headache. And I killed the chat. Yay! It's okay. The headache <laughs> just continues. It's not you that's killing the chat. It's Matt who's killing my brain. Your position yeah, and the thing is... is, is uh, I was just saying that the thing is that if you were actually going off of something that is the most likely, if it has to be a god, if anything, the most likely god would be the uh, pagans' version of multiple gods, not just one. Any, pretty much any polytheistic position is more likely than you know the logically contradictory Yahweh did it all. Like that's like the idea that you have a merciful god who is also just, like, he's 100% merciful and 100% just, but justice and mercy are complete opposite sides of the coin. You have a logical contradiction there. The idea that that somehow is the thing that made the world, that has so many problems in just, just coming out of the mouth compared to a polytheistic position, which is closer to an atheistic position in that you don't know which gods did it, but there are gods that did it, and cool, that's fine. It's the same thing as like a deistic position. The god did it and he's no longer a part of the conundrum, so you might as well operate as if he's not. Okay, cool. That's also fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. Keep the dogma away from me and I don't give a shit. Tell me that it's the god that says I'm going to burn in hell for not believing in him. I might dump a bucket of ice water on you. Well, it's like I'm always saying in my videos. Uh, I don't care what you believe as long as you can share and play nicely with the other kids. Or just take the mm -hmm. Christopher Hitchens approach. I'm, I'm not going to stop you from having toys as long as you don't force me to play with them. That the world created itself, correct? Uh, I think I'm an offshoot of the universe. Uh, we're, we're all offshoots of the Big Bang. The second law of thermodynamics states that ordered things go towards disorder. And in front of me I have a quote from Stephen Hawking. He says, the universe would not exist if there was a decrease in the expansion rate one second after the Big Bang by only one part in 100,000 million million. That's cool. If you want to commit the gambler's fallacy, I'm not so going to stop you. that's one chance out of 100,000 million million chances. 
Is that a great possibility? I don't have enough faith to believe that that came about by itself. Stephen Hawking said, and I quote, he said, if the expansion rate after the Big Bang would have changed by one part and 100,000 million millionths, nothing would exist. So let me ask you this, is one out of 100,000 million millions with a bunch of zeros a great possibility? No. So you accept by faith that that came about on its own? There could have been a universal mind pulling the strings of evolution. There could have been a universal mind that sprang us up just like that. 90,000 years ago, as the science would indicate. Maybe we came from the stars. There's a theory that we came from the stars and we just gave away all of our technology. We didn't want it no more and we started over and yet here we are again. But that takes faith. That takes irrational faith to believe that. No, that takes it, it, faith. It, it takes an imagination. Oh my God. So what's... So yeah, that, uh, that's... It sounds like ancient so, aliens. Aliens. So I've got a couple... I got a couple of questions. <laughs> or got a couple of things to correct here. Um, the whole entire thing about... Um, about uh, Stephen Hawking's and his quote there, uh, he also neglects to come to the to see that Stephen Hawking's also said that um, that if the universe were designed for anything, it would have been designed to create black holes. And uh, that's the one that thing that it's damn good at. Again, yeah, yes, it's the one thing that it is damn good at. Not only that, but it's the also goes against exactly what they're trying to push um so of course they would they would not not at all ever use that also, but also the simple fact is loves oh go ahead i was just gonna say we have a five dollar super chat from wellington smith he said uh sirs why you done me like thus i used to can have brain <laughs> used to can have brain. i used to can have brain it's okay wellington smith i used to can have people i used what to I do the talks what I think is great is we're only 15 minutes into this and we're already at it for almost a half. I'm an hour and a half. <laughs> There's that no, much no. fellacious thinking. Yeah, so. What I have to wonder is like, did they, because uh, this guy's arguments are honestly terrible. Uh, did they have other atheists mm -hmm. that they talked to and just chose the worst one? Like they're not I, with better arguments. That's what I'm thinking happened here. I mean, like, um, raging atheist doesn't have like a uh, terrible ideas all around, but like he does. I don't want to say anything mean about the guy, but it doesn't seem like he prepared pr uh, well for this uh, no. encounter with Matt Powell at all. Um, Whereas Matt Powell's working no, off a the... script he's used a thousand times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, if the you actually is, watch... Is... Sorry. Um, if you actually watch the uh, debate that they had on uh, Raging Atheist channel, there's actually like a, a ton of problems that... Um, uh, that actually like uh, transpired like a uh, Matt Powell's film crew was fucking with raging atheists uh, camera equipment. He ended up losing like a lot of data, but uh, he lucky enough filmed it on his phone to make up for it. Um, so that's, that's pretty sketchy. Also you'll notice uh, in that interview, or, I mean uh, that debate as well as even in this movie, anytime raging atheist tries to sneak in a uh, good argument, Matt Powell talks right over him and throws something else at him and kind of gish gallops. I mean, we do have one person here who has talked to Matt personally, so they could probably verify that. Well, I mean, I, I was in a uh, live chat with him, and the problem is there was like six of us, including him. So I can't really say that that happened exactly because let's face it, in a chat like that, everybody is talking over each other at some point. So that's fair. I can at least grant that. Okay, I've got one more uh, point of contention here. Sure. Matt states about, you know, the second law of thermodynamics. Um, and he obviously, for those who don't know, uh, conveniently left off, left out the first law, which is energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Oof. So that whole entire idea right there leaves out a god because if energy can't be created there can be nothing there to create it well you didn't create it, the energy god had the energy he just gave it 
Well, Incidentally, we, we do have uh, another super chat. Mars Lander has touchdown confirmed science rocks from what? Oh, Hansen. Hansen. See, that's that's honestly, yeah. NASA uh, JPL man JPL Jet Propulsion Labs. So, okay. yeah. Ah, okay. So I guess uh, like, Cutie yeah, Pie nice. is is watching this live event or whatever. Gotcha. Yes. And thank you, Josiah, for letting us know. God, that's that's amazing. I love it. It's better science than Matt Powell's science. His science falsely so called. Right. Mm-hmm. <sighs> to consider it. Just imagine. Yeah. So long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> oh, basically please, no. all of the matter in the entire universe, all of the energy in the entire universe, it was all just crammed into this wait, one Wait, 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 wait. Stop, 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 stop. I know he's this being famous, a... but a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, the universe was formed. From a galaxy. <laughs> yes, this guy knows nothing yeah. about like like a uh, galactic scale. This is, just trying to this is universal terrible. Scale. This is another fucking weird straw man they build. They uh, they like it, any like, science thinking with science fiction. It yeah, like I said, sense. this is a this is a terrible Star Wars um, sequel. I did well, this Star well, Wars sequel is Star horrible. Wars. I why do they not even have my favorite character, Jar Jar? Honestly, that's one of the things that kind of struck no, me. No, no, the way he's talking, his favorite character is probably Wesley Crusher. Because <laughs> well, he gets things that wrong. I'm sorry. I kill the chat with my humor. Fuck me. <laughs> like, uh, no, helped... I loved it. Raging Atheist helped in t unintentionally build this weird Star Wars like uh, comparison when he was talking ancient aliens. Yeah, he, he walked into a trap. That's really like I I can't even blame him. He walked into a trap, and it's it's very plain that that's what happened, and it's unfortunate. It's like For what sure. happened. With, it's like what happened mm -hmm. with Skylar Fiction. Skylar didn't realize his channel was going to be fucking taken down, but it no less happened for having Matt Powell onto there. Granted, Matt didn't. Yep. Matt, as far as I know, I'm I'm going to go ahead and apply the principle of charity. I don't think Matt intentionally made Skylar's channel get screwed up, but he was the reason it happened. For sure. Yeah, and... Mm. Smaller than the period on a page. And even smaller than that, now scientists are saying it was just infinitesimally small. And it was approaching zero in its size. Here's... Around. And then this little dot... The singularity is like infinite density, right? They kind of talk about. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't. I don't know enough about I this. I don't. I. I. So the issue here, I. I think I know what you're. What you're going to be getting at. I think I know what. What fucking Anderson's getting at. Black holes have their own singularities in a much yeah. similar respect. And I also. Like, I also don't think uh, Anderson realizes that like. Ninety percent of you is actually just empty space. Like most of you is empty mm -hmm. space. There's a shit ton of space between every single atom and quark and molecule that makes up you. Tons of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, uh, there, this reminds me of like Bill Nye, the science guy videos on like the empty space where like you get the proton and then you're going football fields away before you even hit the first electron. <laughs> it gets. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, is there's so much accurate science behind the Big Bang. There's like you, like we can know that this is what happened, type of thing. But go ahead, yeah. I probably might theory, get into it in a minute. The theory of relativity allows us to turn back time and see that it happened, and then we have the cosmic microwave background radiation to back that up. Every time we launch a satellite, we're almost like a basically proving. Improving the theory. Because we have to use its predictions. No yep, and so the thing is, is we've... I'm just reading the, the chat. Oh, was that sorry. directed at us, sir? 
Uh, well, Darth Killer yeah. said to Atheist Rationale, uh, no, a singularity is just a point where things aren't defined. So even a black hole isn't a singularity, only a big Talking bang. about the point at the, the center. He was, he, was, he was talking about the point at the center. Like, black holes have singularities, not black holes are singularities. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is, like, we have... We know all of this, and every single day, uh, the whole entire... Um, Cosmic background radiation, or cos cosmic, whatever. It, uh, we always keep on getting more and more images of it. We are right. constantly proving that right. Um, as I can't fact, wait till we get the cosmic neutrino background. <laughs> right, um, but even even whenever we look at the um, the whole entire thing is like whenever you expecting the. Uh, the singularity that it caused the big bang type of thing. Um, whenever you have this, uh, whole entire thing, you have a bunch of these pretty much a nuclear reaction happening. Uh, you would expect there, not only the background radiation, but you expect that there to be some sort of heat and stuff. And we've even, uh, they calculated that if there was that it'd be roughly around, uh, three Kelvin, and that was the prediction. That was the, uh, they said, we predict that we're going to find it and it's going to be roughly about three Kelvin. And whenever they found it, it was like 2.7, give or take 0.5. So, isn't that well within the error of margin, though? I mean, this is, yes, that is well within the error of margin. I mean, the and margin so, for error? I mean, how, yeah, how are you going to set it wrong? Yeah, the margin for error. Because you even got us wrong on how, it. Damn. How, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but how are you going to uh, sit there and deny that that was an accurate prediction? I mean, it's just there's just too much of it that is uh, that has been accurately predicted and has come as a hell. As a matter of fact, uh, King Crocoduck has an entire um, video where he sits there and answers this guy. Where he sits there and goes, "Of course, there are different ways that you can." Um, you can disprove the the uh, the Big Bang, and then he's like, the whole entire uh, video is called answering um, confronting answering questions one, where he sits there and says, unfortunately for you, however, all this stuff happens, and he goes, these are all predictions that have been made and have been found to be accurate. You're you're not going. He's like, you would have to sit there and be able to disprove all of these, even though you can't, pretty much. Yeah, what a, it kind of bugs me when people say you can't uh, observe uh, the Big Bang. Yeah, we can't actually observe the the actual event, but we could observe the effects of of it happening. You know what I mean? Well, I mean I've I'm seen the right. Big Bang, but enough about my porn habits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see if we can if we can somehow manage to hit the 20 minute mark in the next. So I don't want us to go over like an hour and 45 minutes, but I somehow I feel like enough stupid is going to be in the movie that we can't even make it to the 20 minute mark. Oh. This uh, is exploded into the size of our observable universe right now. And it continues to expand even beyond that which we can observe. Let's talk about the Big Bang then, because you say that the, the universe could shoot out here and energy could shoot over there. Since when do you see a Big Bang or an explosion creating anything? Have you ever observed that? Um, I'm not an expert on explosions. Like, like I'm not example, a computer. You know, I build computers Define like this create. iPhone down here. Like if I said, it's oh, I believe that iPhone sure. came about by just an explosion, you know, in a, in a oh, mad storm. Uh, you look at me and say, you're an idiot. Mm. But that's the atheistic worldview is that, oh, well, it could be anything. There isn't an atheistic worldview. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh stop. 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 <sighs> Okay, Matthew 5.22 literally says, and this is Jesus talking, that if you call someone a fool, you're in danger of hellfire. No shit. Oh, darn. So this, whenever Ooh. they use the fool is said in his heart, there is no God, they're like like total hypocrites and in danger of hellfire. So, yeah. Okay, keep going. That's uh, corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. 
do you believe that an explosion well, out I guess of every chaos, time science heals cancer, we're, we're committing evil, right? Not to mention every single time he says, you think an explosion did this? Well, an expansion, not an explosion, first of all. Get that part yes. fucking right. Uh, once you've got mm -hmm. the part right where it's an expansion, not an explosion, then you can actually start understanding how some type of order formed out of that chaos. But if you keep calling it an explosion, it's not going to make any sense. I don't think these people realize that the actual history behind the formation of the Big Bang Theory was a Catholic bishop posited the theory of universal expansion, and it was actually an atheist who created the pejorative Big Bang to make fun of it because he thought it was stupid. And the pejorative label is the one that stuck even though the theory has been for as confirmed as we can for the time being, thanks to cosmic background uh, yeah. micro-radiation. Even though we've confirmed it, we've still kept the pejorative as its classical name, but the pejorative was deliberately misleading. I don't understand I, I don't know if they get that. It's not a fucking explosion. The Big Bang is literally a moniker used to make fun of the theory. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think that they... The thing is, is you're talking to people who don't believe it. And they they don't want to believe it, so they're not going to try to understand it. And they're not going to do any fucking research either. Of course not. Uh, like for instance, um, this is going to sound uh, incredibly bad, but um, right now I've actually looked because I'm planning on doing a video on the Big Bang. Uh, I've looked and I found this one article that it said that uh, we are having issues like so. The way that we judge the different galaxies is, of course, by um, by standard candlelight, um, if, if you will. Um, pretty much the distance between us and the uh, closest galaxy, starlight-wise, and then uh, keep going on that way. And that shows us how we've gotten from where we are to the farthest away star um, galaxy. But... We're having issues going backwards, going from us to the other way. And we're, it's const not we're constantly moving it's away from it, which makes it really hard to do that. Exactly. And so they are uh, constantly trying to find a different way to uh, figure out the ones that, that are that mm -hmm. um, to going backwards. But we're, you know, they're, they're, they, we're still in the process of finding the best way to uh, measure that distance. With that said, and so with that said, you guys I are mean, gonna have to carry the chat for just yeah. a second. I need to go wake Pam up. Okay. Um. So yeah, we just you know we we're having issues going backwards and figuring out you know the distance between us and the uh. I guess you could say closest to the beginning of time uh, of the uh, expansion. But we're having no issues going from where we are forward. And this is uh, something that is uh, that they're, like I said, they're just currently working on. They are doing their best to figure it out. Uh, One thing they don't ever talk about is, is like. Um, still here? Yeah, Bionic Dance is still here. They never bring up any hypothesis uh, that exists for what might have happened before the Big Bang. They they always seem to just the throw God arguments in. arguments they make and, and uh, like their attempts to rationalize God's existence, it's rarely the actual hard science. So I don't have a lot to say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, well, the thing is, is whenever it comes to before the Big Bang... Um, and uh, this is, of course, just according to my own very own opinion. I know there are people who are out there who are constantly trying to, uh, scientists, who are trying to figure this type of things out. But in my opinion, what happened before the Big Bang is irrelevant to the fact that it happened. And that, um, to me, it just, there's really no point in it. I would say, that of course, I'm not a scientist. To and me, not, not going to. To me, the entire ever. question of what happened oh, before ahead. the Pig Bang is is nonsense because 
the the moment mm-hmm. that the Big Bang happened, mathematically is represented as t equals zero, time equals zero. This is the beginning of time as we know it. Right. Time is a measurement of change, which means things happen, which means the idea that anything happened before the Big Bang sounds nonsensical to me because the Big Bang was t equals zero. You couldn't have had things right. happening before time equals zero. And the thing is, is uh, it could be there's uh, this whole entire thing where, um, like, for instance, um, we know that uh, at, right before the uh, Big Bang happened, we're in that, you know, singular, you know, dot size thing. Um, and I think that people are trying to figure out if like how long we were staying how long we stood stayed in that part you know that form but again even if you found that there was you know it, whatever you there, there is to me it's just like you said it's it's illogical it's it's kind of it's pointless to try to figure out what happened beforehand the point is it happened we're here What's why should we look at what happened before? And if and if something did happen, bring up a good point. But ideas like the big bounce sound kind of fun. The the big bounce does sound kind of fun, but the big bounce assumes that from if if I understand this correctly, the big bounce assumes that there's a mass acceleration at the beginning and the acceleration of the universe decreases over time. But when we look at the actual redshift of the universe the acceleration's increasing, which kind of destroys the... Not destroys, but it kind of throws a monkey wrench in the idea of the big bounce and the big crunch. Oh, yeah, it definitely does. But um, I, I, I think... And one the of thing the is, is another thing that... Do, or it has to do with, like, the curvature of the universe, though. I think SciShow Space has a, uh, a, a video on the hypothesis. Um, but the uh, the big... Bounce has more, um, would have uh, some slight evidence supporting it if you, we can find any positive curvature in the universe. But so far, we haven't found that. Well, stay up, guys. I might have to go. Again, that's like another monkey wrench, but that, it's it's fun to think about. That's fine, Kate. We're actually only going to be on air for another three ish minutes. I think, I think we'll probably play the next 20 seconds of the movie, and there's probably going to be something stupid to talk about in that 20 seconds. Okay. Which is which is going well, to mean? I mean, I'll see what I can do, but okay. Uh, <laughs> produced order out of chaos. Whoever said that an explosion out of chaos from, from one out of one hundred thousand million millions chances is chaos. Uh, Wait, what? So you say? I think most uh, people don't. Well, really even chaos leads to order. I, I think if people actually had it explained to them, a lot less people would believe in it. If, it, if people had it explained to them, pe- a lot less people would believe it. You know what that also well, works for, uh, Mr. Anderson? The Bible. I love the look on his face. <laughs> just, I love, I love his constantly like someone just goosed him. <laughs> I love the constant shifting between the two guys. Like, like yeah, huh, huh? But, just, I mean, uh, again, I mean, it's like, Chaos will ultimately lead to order just because things calm down eventually. Like if you take mm-hmm. if you take a cup of pencils and you throw the cup of pencils out, you have cacophony, you have chaos for all of what? Ten seconds? And then after that, everything sits everything stands still creating its own type of order. The universe as we see it is a type of organized chaos. It's what happens when everything settles after a, after a big set of uh, circumstances, a giant cacophony. The same as what would happen if you threw a bunch of pencils. Yeah. And, it's what we expect. And I'm sorry, but this whole... And I'm sorry, but this whole entire... Uh, this whole entire... Um, what is it? The uh, probability thing... It's just the puddle in the uh, the uh, puddle in the uh, pothole uh, scenario. Wasn't the, wasn't this pothole you know, made just just for me? Exactly, and and so it's that's all they're doing is that they're they are look they are 
looking backwards and saying, <laughs> wow, this all is just right for me and not realizing that it's only right for you because the the circumstances had occurred to be for you to be there. And it's just, I'm sorry. I, I, I always hate the probability argument. Like, Oh, it's just so improbable that it happened. It's, the only reason why you're here to say it's improbable is because it's it because happen. it did in fact happen. Like that like, isn't the probability of things that happened are always one, right? Yeah. We, we no less find that we are, mm -hmm. in, we are here. Therefore, this is where we are. We can't be in any other place than where we are. So the chances of us being where we happen to be are one because we're here. It's, exactly. It's a, it's a very frustrating concept that like, once you get your head around it, you're like, okay, no, that makes sense. But if you don't have your head around it, it's like, wait, no, the chances of me being here was so improbable. Like, well, the chances of you being born were improbable, right? Your parents had to meet, mm -hmm. their parents had to meet, the parents of those parents had to meet, they had to have sex, and one in the thousands of eggs the mother could possibly have, and one of the thousands of sperm that could have possibly hit it had mm -hmm. to interact in each and every one of those scenarios for you to get here in the way that you're here today. Those are astronomically small chances, and yet you're here. It is mm -hmm. so problematic. It's, it's just, yeah, and so it's just the worst argument to, to, for the beginning, you know, of, oh, well, you know, all this had to, you know, because of, there's just no probable way that it could have done it. It's like, what? Uh, just no. Just, also, I'd just, just like to say that. that Atheist Rationale has a very stylish sock on his microphone. Do not diss the sock. Very, was, yeah, I like the gray, the best kind of socks there are. There Can't was a, see the... I use white socks, sir. I disagree with you, but but I'm not going to condemn you for your beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I, I used a sock as a pop filter for a very long time on my channel, so I can't even I can't even discredit that. <laughs> They're pretty cheap. I'll upgrade soon. I'm kind of in a weird bind, but that's private stuff. Yeah, it's. This is, this is one of the reasons we have channels. We have Patreons and stuff for stuff like this on the off chance that people want to support us, which sometimes they do, and it's great. <laughs> but with that said... It just um, helps if I make content. Yeah, I, might, I might have something in the works. <laughs> you, got, you got to make content. You, you have to oh, make yeah, something. No, I've, I've been, at, been out of the game for like three weeks. Actually, I am working on something <laughs> right now. I had to scrap a video, which kind of fucking sucks. Because uh, what's his name? Bible Illustrated. Uh, some some new mix came into it, but um, I'm working on a different video now. Should be filming hopefully later today. See, I'm I'm so just sitting here like days. realizing how much I've tortured myself by doing daily uploads for the past two weeks. When I realize how hard it is for everybody else to maintain a schedule like that, and I'm just like, I really am shooting yeah, myself in the stomach. <laughs> I'm shooting myself in the stomach. This is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're pulling on nighters. I can't function if I don't sleep. Dude, my <laughs> sleep for the past two weeks has been nothing but a series of short naps. That's it. That's all I've done. How how are you even alive right now, man? <laughs> That's probably why I'm sick. Like, huh, I'm not even going to lie. It. That might be why I'm sick. <laughs> Your immune system goes to shit with lack of sleep, so. Yeah. Oh, it sounded like Kate wanted to say something a second ago. Oh, no, she's just frozen. Her internet has a uh, her internet no. has done a poop. Yeah, her internet is. I frustrated atheist makes videos sometimes. Keep yeah, I, uh, sometimes it's uh, yeah. He, I know he's Frankie is fucking with me. Frank, Frank I always <laughs> fuck with him. Frankie's uh, definitely fucking with you. And then Brand's just sitting there like laughing. Yeah. But <laughs> right? I do I do think that's gonna but, be. The... Uh... Go on, Russ. Oh, I was just gonna say. Um, I was just gonna say that. Uh... Yeah, I, I do make uh, I do make the the content from time to time. Well, you also do it on a phone, which is which is, this... which is madness. Yes, that's always great, always great and fun. And Kate, I see that you're packed now. Your internet has given you mercy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to what people were saying about keeping a schedule for making videos, I mean, I actually 
like I can spend six hours, give or take, on a single video that started out as six minutes long, the one I'm responding to, and I get tired. I get really tired. Like like not yeah. just um not just physically, but it's like emotionally tired. So I have limited myself to maybe uh, a video a week, maybe two. So yeah. it, I it, can relate to that. It can be really draining listening to people like uh, Steven Anderson, for instance, on repeat when you're cutting up a video. It's, well, I mean, and not just that, it's it's like cutting up my own footage. Uh, I I keep wanting to make a how I make my videos video just to show people what goes into it. Uh, yeah, the 3D imaging stuff has to take so much work, and I think you are gone. I, yeah. Oh. No, there are you back. Again? Okay. There, well, there I, you I are. There you are. I actually have most of the uh, uh, the 3D stuff pre-made already, so that's not the problem. problem is, like I've said before, I work off of a script, but one of the reasons I have so many cuts is just because I can't do it all at once. I, I will have to do so many takes. Mm -hmm. But just chopping up what I say and putting it all next to each other, it after a while, it gets tedious as fuck. Yeah, I do it line for line, and oh, yeah, sometimes no, I take like ten or fifteen takes on just one single thing. I just stopped I, using a script I have like the, months I ago. I tried that; <laughs> it doesn't work for me. I, <laughs> no, no, I need a script, otherwise I'm going to be all uh, uh, mm, huh. So yeah. <laughs> Whenever I do mine, I'm usually at work, so I will sit there and go to you know do a recording, and when I'm recording my voice part, all of a sudden you'll just hear. Yeah, you've got to re-record it. I'm gonna have to wait, and I'm gonna redo this. I've actually yeah. been on a. Or I'll sit there and do it. Good. I've I've been on I've been a PA on a filming set for a movie before, and that's actually something that like they deal with all the time. There's like a plane will go by or a train will go by, and they just have to make another cut, another edit, another another run, and like um we were doing a we were doing a shoot in the freezing cold. And so the actors had to, like, it was a scene where they were laying on the grass. And it was, like, 35 degrees. Like, it was cold. Um, not mm -hmm. freezing, but, but cold. And there's no way to tell in the footage that it was cold. But they had to, like, lay down and have parts of them off camera covered. And, like, in between shoots, every time a plane would drive by, it just, like, cut the shoot. Actors would get up, they'd drink some hot chocolate, they'd go inside for a second, they'd come back out and lay back down in the grass and shoot what happened again. Um, it, it, I'm so glad that I get to record in an enclosed area where I don't have to deal with that. But then I listen to my recordings and I hear my cats playing with toys in the background. I'm like, ah, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's gotten, there's one time I sat there, I was like doing a recording and Nobody was there, thank goodness, where I was working at at, the day, at that day. But it was pouring down rain. So between big, long bursts of just rain coming down so hard that you would probably only hear the rain and not my voice, I had to sit there and be like, okay, it's lighting up. Okay. And then I'd quickly be like, okay, and blah, 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 blah. And then blah, you just, just oh, kind of get it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so it was like, damn it. And you can still hear it, so I hear the rain. So I was like, all right, just throw some music behind it. Yeah, music behind my videos is one of the secret keys to, like, removing some of the, the weird background shit that I wasn't able to get rid of in post. But with that said, um, we are 16 minutes into the movie uh, of an almost hour and a half long movie. This is only part one. Ideally, we'll be returning to this next week if possible if everybody else is able to as well if not everybody then then we'll just treat this like D and D, where like some people can come to the campaign and some people can't <laughs> um <laughs> but if anybody has not subscribed to bionic dance frustrated atheist or atheist rationale all their links to their channels are in the description so by uh, please also, go subscribe if, to their channels if anyone cares i've started using my gaming channel again for the first time in like a year or two so bionica oh. gaming if you wanna bionica i'm looking that up right now do you have that linked on your uh, on your channel anywhere i do in every description i've got links to that channel uh to my facebook group uh to my patreon hint 
hint to my Amazon wish list. Hint, hint. Just saying. So, yeah. I, I recently put up my Amazon wish list, and immediately a user picked up the 4K camera and the studio light and the lavalier mic that I put on there. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Thank oh, you. M- most, but of what? Mine's, <laughs> most of mine's just DVDs and, and stuff like that. So, you know, entertainment crap. Most of mine studio equipment yeah. that I don't have yet. <laughs> I work with what I've got until I've got things that I didn't have before. Mm. The only thing that stopped me from making an Amazon wish list is I don't know what's too much, and I don't want to like ask oh, somebody. If they think don't that's don't bother. It's a wish list. If they want to give it to you, they'll give it to you. If not, they won't. I mean, yeah. there's no reason to not put it out there. Like the be- my best advice I yeah. could do is put things. This is what other YouTubers have done that I've seen. Put things on there that are low dollar. If people want to send you like a Christmas present or something like that, then they'll pick up something that's low dollar, like a DVD or a cheap video game or something. And then mm-hmm. if there's also like a piece of equipment that you need that's more expensive, put that on there as well. You might have somebody who really likes your content and wants you to improve it and will send you that. Like for me, that 4K camera is going to be used to shoot a lot more live scenes for my videos because every now and again I'll insert one. It's not often. But with that camera, like that funny hammer one from the one of the videos recently. <laughs> yes, where Ma- yeah. where Master Apologist made me want the stupid beat out of me. Yes, um, well, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm looking at my wish list right now. Somebody just sent me Space 1999, the first season, and that's crazy. It's fifty six dollars. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, and I mean, whenever you, especially if you are making content, uh, hint hint to myself. <laughs> uh, but whenever you're making content, um, if you're if you have um, if you're if you're following, actually wants to see you improve, and they they because they and the thing is is that's exactly why they do these things. It's because they enjoy your content and they want to make it more enjoyable for themselves. They're not doing it because they're like, oh well, you know, let's put pity on him or anything like that. It's you are doing a service for us. We want to enjoy it better. So we're going to help you out, make it better for us. Yeah. That's and, all okay, I have to admit, for a while there, I was feeling a little selfish and guilty because I was doing those those unboxing videos, and people just kept sending me so much stuff. And I was like, you know, I feel like a jerk. This is not what my channel is for. So I actually started to do it on the Bionica channel because it started as a vlog channel, really, uh, and nobody watched it. So <laughs> whatever. <laughs> But I mean, but, but the thing is, that in my my head, nobody owes me anything, so no, it's don't. not a big deal no. that that people don't send me stuff no. much. So whatever. No, like she said, it's not that they owe you. It's just the fact that they say to themselves, "I want, I like this channel. I like the content. I wish it was just a little bit more enjoyable for me. So I'm going to help them out." Yeah. Or, or, or and, and I mean, that's the same thing that Patreon is for. Nobody owes me any donation on Patreon either. I'm just very grateful they do it. That's that's how I am as well. And that's why I've got a, I have a 20% rule on my Patreon. 20% of whatever money that I get on Patreon automatically filters back into whatever YouTubers that I can filter that money into. So, um, but I, but I always maintain it as a strict 20% if I can. So, like, right now I make $100. It's not even really that much um, on Patreon. So $20 of that goes back in to, like, Apologia, Goblet's Cranium, and others. As I get more money from Patreon, then I can put more money back into other content creators because that's that's just kind of how I want that to be. I would prefer that no matter what, 20% of whatever I make on there goes back into the community that has given me shout outs, has given me spots on their channels that have let me actually exist as a channel. Well, I mean, I, I'm still on, when I started using Patreon, they had a per video system instead of a monthly system. Mm-hmm. And I'm still on that just because I'm not sure what will happen if I I'm switch. Like and, um, so if I put out enough videos in a month, I can get anywhere to like, 700 ish usually a little bit uh below that so that's pretty cool it's what lets me do this without trying to find a real job so i i have mine set to per video but i only charge once a week on that even though i make five videos a week now i still only charge once a week because i'm well 
I mean, I, I don't know if if you know it or not. I, it sounds like not. Did uh, people set monthly limits? So I mean, if someone says I'm giving you twenty bucks, it'll just be for the first video. But then sometimes people say I'll give you five bucks for every video, right? And that's one of the reasons why I don't put up the dollar amounts for uh, my patrons because, uh, like, I don't want to rip off credit wise someone who's giving me like twenty, thirty bucks but they're only like their donation is five per video. Cause uh, if you get that other person who's like, I'll give you 15 for the first video. Well, the person who gives, gives me five deserves more credit. So I, yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird line to walk credit wise. Fair. I mean, it's, it's like with me, I have, I have one patron who gives 35 and has a monthly limit. And I have one patron who does 20 and does not have a monthly limit. Um, but I still I still have the strict because there's no way for me to see who has monthly limits on Patreon. I just go off of what is shown on my patron list. Whatever's shown on there, I put into the slides. So if somebody wants to be on the slides, but they have five dollars a month, they could put in for twenty with a monthly limit of once and they would end up getting on a slide just because at that point I can visualize it and I can see it and I can work with it. And then I can put it in. But that's just me. That's just how I, I have mine ran. I don't say that anybody else has to run theirs that way. Yeah. But I think well, that I mean, is... Well, I mean, because I, I look at people who do the thing where they, they show, like, here's my top patron. I'm sure they're on the monthly system instead of the per video system. And, uh, I mean, that's cool that they, they can do that that way. I just feel horrible doing it that way myself because of the, the per video system. That's all. That's fair. Um, I will say with that, though, I think that we we definitely need to go ahead and stop the stream itself just because we've responded to as much of the movie we're going as we're going to get to for the time being. Um, mm. And I'm getting to the point where I'm saying um more often than I'm comfortable with, even though I'm used to doing this without a script. Ums are still a plague that I have to edit out of my audio. So. Yes. Yes. Uh, pregnant pauses are the death of a video I've found. Uh, that's why I work from a script. Uh, and let's face it, sometimes people, in, instead of um or uh, uh, a pregnant pause can be, you know, or fucking. So, yeah. yeah. It's like, so there was that fucking, you know, thing. It's and, like, and, yeah, and you've, you've I want to keep nothing. that out of my videos. Yeah, and at that point you said nothing of any substance, but you still said things. Yeah, well. That's like Jordan Peterson levels of trying to get things out. Um, so the Godless Listeners says, I was supposed to give Sarah some info for a video I really wanted covered, but life and death got in the way. I am sorry about that. Um, but again, my email is always open if you want to send me things. And if you want to talk, because it sounds like you might need that, then again, my email is open for that as well. But I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. I thank you guys all for coming out. And I thank Atheist Rationale, Frustrated Atheist, and Bionic Dance for helping me with this project. And also, I would like to once again give credit to Atheist Rationale because this whole project started as his idea. So this would not be a thing if he was not helping out. Yeah, thanks for the uh, the, the credit, man. I'm kind of choking up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't yeah. choke up. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just fucking weird. Um, uh, nah, but um, so when it comes to new IFB stuff, uh, I've been trying to uh, kind of spread it out with like additional content because I don't want that to be the, the sole thing I do here on YouTube. I know it's been a little while and I've been focusing more on this movie. Uh, the the whole reason for that though is uh, just because I said I was going to um debunk this movie when it came out and it, it's it seemed to be kind of the uh more priority issue i guess you can say but um well, that's one of the reasons if, why i wanted to have this stream set up because that way we can all kind of weigh in on our issues with this movie without having to devote so much time to it that it eclipses everything else we do mm. oh yeah I, i'm really glad you did this it was a lot of fun too especially if we're going to be uh taking on the whole movie um just want to give you a heads up, though. The last half an hour is just credits with like Kent Hovind debate footage. Oh, so it's awesome! Okay. just an hour long, so uh, oh, that's good. Oh yeah. man, we got we got to watch this half hour of debate footage. I mean, that's, we'll um, we'll do it. We'll do it. But it's it's more just like them cherry picking arguments with no uh, the best of Kent Hovind. <laughs> 
All right, guys. Where, it. where did all the water come from? Oh gosh, the from? way he pronounces teas. Here, guys. Water. <laughs> Thank you all, and remember to stay hydrated with lots of water.